This will be the longest driver I've ever hit. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I have a driver head here in my hands here, and this will be the longest driver I've ever hit. This driver is actually something that you've seen on the channel before. I've actually played it, but I have made some modifications to it that make it completely illegal. So if you have watched some of my other videos, I have experimented with high core drivers here in the past, and I have found that some drivers that advertise themselves to be high core don't really appear to be high core, or at least I didn't get any more distance from them. But some of the drivers drivers particularly the crank formula x and the xx i actually did see some pretty impressive gains so i'm a believer that thinner face that higher core that coefficient of restitution actually does work it just adds a little bit more of a trampoline springing effect i'm kind of surprised i mean i guess it's just science but i really didn't expect to see a whole lot out of that that being said i just recently discovered a company called world's hottest drivers they've been around for a while they actually do some work on baseball bats as well but they have a service driver face shaving there's a couple companies that do it i found one in japan too but world's hottest drivers is based in phoenix right here in the usa and actually the turnaround time on this face shaving was pretty quick here so one of the things that i did a while back was order this tailor-made sim 2 max driver head this is actually just the same thing that you can buy right off the shelf the only reason that this is color changed is because it's part of the my sim program i wanted something that was completely blacked out it just helps my eye so what i did here was i actually looked at their little chart and i actually ordered the face shaving where they go and they just remove some of the face here based on my swing speed now i probably got a little aggressive on it even though i can swing high 80s low 90s 90s. I actually picked the core value that was associated with the 80 to 90 mile per hour swing speed because I figured, hey, if I'm going to get a little extra assistance, why not get all the assistance that I can get? Boom! While this might be just a little bit overkill for my swing speed, I'm actually excited to see if it makes a difference. I am also a little worried that I might break the face. So that's something that's kind of haunting me. So how am I going to be able to tell you if this really works? Well, I actually went and I bought a TaylorMade Sim 2 Max. It's the exact same head here. This one is just right off the shelf, same loft and everything, but it has that standard face. You can see it's just kind of charcoal gray right there. Now, I thought I would just compare these head to head here. Now, other than the fact that this one is painted black, you can see the difference here. When they remove that additional metal off the face, you get down to this very shiny, almost reflective face here. It does have just a little bit of grain to it, kind of like stainless steel or something like that, but I think the face is titanium. I don't know if they're cast or forged titanium. The one thing I did here too is I actually asked for the regrooving. So you can see here, I think they're maybe laser etched. They put in some grooves. It's not an exact match for what was on there, but the grooves to me don't really matter. I don't use them for alignment. All I really wanted was a little detail on the face so that it doesn't look just like a mirrored finish right there. So they did put those grooves back on there. I think the groove pattern might vary depending on the type of driver that you send in there. And one of the things that I was really surprised at is how well they did here. Obviously, they have managed to preserve that bulge and roll, particularly on this face, which is a twist face and can be a little hard. And you can even see here, one of the things I was worried about is where the club head is painted, especially up here where this is just regular paint. Would that remove some of the paint? Would it chip off? But man, they just did an incredible job and it looks almost like a factory finish right there. So I'm really impressed with that, especially considering that you're obviously going to lose all of those factory finishes. The whole titanium face on this little bad boy has that kind of dark finish. I'm not sure if it's anodized or something like that, but obviously it's a nice sharp edge there. So it looks very, very good. So a couple things that I noticed about this and I didn't really think about this is that when you are removing from the face here, and my guess is maybe a millimeter of thickness, titanium is pretty light, but you are removing material. And I was actually surprised at how much lighter the club head is once it came back. So when I threw this on the scale and this on the scale, I found that this was, I think about eight grams lighter. So one of the things that they did is they included this little card with some information. And one of the things that they talk about is that when you do shave your club and lighten it up you might actually have to add weight back to preserve your preferred swing weight and that's going to depend on how far down the core rabbit hole you want to go but going from 0.83 to 0 0.90 resulted in about eight grams so what you can do and what i really love about these sims is that you can change this weight on the back here to add more weight now that's going to preserve your swing weight but actually what i was thinking about it is when you start cheating weight to the back 
you start to get more loft, but it also tends to be more forgiving. So I think I should actually get a little bit more dynamic loft with this little bad boy now that I've gotten these to the exact same head weight. Obviously you can see that they are not installed in the club. I'm gonna use the same shaft in both of these, but I thought I would just take them to the range to see if it actually gives me any more distance. I'm pretty excited about this. All right, so I went on a pretty long journey with these two driver heads, and I was really, to be honest, expecting this high core driver to just outperform this driver in every way every configuration possible but i knew that i was probably gonna have to do a little tweaking with this driver in particular because of what it does when you get this face shaved particularly the loss of the eight grams on the face here was pretty significant and so i tried to compensate for that in a few different methods so the first method was just the easiest one was to take out this rear weight here and just add all of the additional weight to the back so this whole process took me a few weeks because i had to order some custom weights and so i actually ordered an a variety of these weights as well as a variety of the weights right up here i think it's a t20 tamper proof tool to get that out of there and so the easiest thing to do was just add all of the lost weight in the back here which i thought to be honest would make it even more forgiving because adding the weight back there tends to give you a higher launch a little more forgiveness and then i took it to the first simulator which tends to be a fun simulator i don't know that the data is always super accurate there but what i found was that between the sim and the sim high core I was getting a ball speed of 124 miles an hour off of my Sim 2 Max, and I was getting a ball speed of 126.2 miles an hour on average from my high core driver here. So that really was pretty close, only 2.2 miles an hour difference. So I was a little surprised at that. Now I will say that when I was playing with this driver with all the additional weight in the back here, the driver felt really weird. You know, every time I got up there to swing with it, it felt like the driver wanted to just kind of open up. And I actually thought that maybe I was having some problem rotating it back quickly enough, although I wasn't really seeing a lot of fades or slices particularly with it, but it just really felt awkward. It really didn't feel balanced. And I always felt like I was trying to compensate for that a little bit. And so, it probably makes a little sense that I was redirecting or reallocating some muscles to square the club face that I could have been using for speed. So when I came back, I thought, well, what I should do is not put the weight in the back. What I should do is replace all the weight that I've lost up here in the front. So I removed this weight and then weighted up the front with a custom weight here that was as heavy as I could get. And I added a little bit more weight down here to replace all eight grams up here on the front because I thought, well, I'm losing all the weight up here. So if I replace all the weight up here, then the driver is going to feel very normal and i would say that the driver did feel much more normal in my hands i didn't feel like i was twisting it or that it wanted to open up and it wasn't torquing my hands nearly as much as it was with all the weight in the back so i took it to the range and i used again my rap soda which tends to be eh, kind of ballpark accurate and the ball speeds that i was getting with the stock sim here was 124 miles an hour and the ball speeds on my high core driver was 128 now i will say that that is a slight improvement an additional four miles an hour coming off the face here is not insignificant by any means. A lot of us would probably love to see that. That actually can translate to six to eight additional yards, which is nothing to sneeze at, but it wasn't quite as much as I was hoping for or expecting. And so what I actually did then on my third version here was I thought about splitting the weight difference. And actually that was nice because then I didn't have to use additional lead tape or weights or anything. I could actually find a custom weight to increase the weight here by four grams and increase the weight in the back here by four grams so i kind of split that eight grams between the two now i thought that's still biasing more weight to the back and i was wondering if that would actually kind of replicate the results that i had on my very first round with this but that ended up yielding the best results and still felt really good in my hands and during the swing so i actually decided to go to the foresight gc because that tends to be the most accurate ball launch monitor I actually found I was getting ball speeds of 115.6 miles per hour on average off of this driver head, and I was getting ball speeds of 123.3 miles an hour off of this driver head. Now that seemed to be pretty definitive because I wanted to make sure that I was playing around with this to kind of dial in the weights, and I was seeing seven, eight miles an hour more ball speed off of the driver face with the high core driver. So that was kind of proof positive to me that the high core works. Maybe not as much as some people think or expect it to work, but when you're going from an 830 core to maybe an 880 or an 890 core, it might not be as dramatic as going to a 900 or a 910 or 920 core. Spoiler alert, we're gonna be trying those 920 cores as well. 
On top of that though, the GC was showing that there was a pretty good distance gain with this. And it was saying that I was averaging 212.1 yards with the stock driver and 229.6 yards with the high core driver. So over 17 more yards with this. So I know that, you know, companies that provide high core drivers like Crank Golf and World's Hottest Drivers say that you can get 10, 15, 20 more yards. And I was right in that corridor with 17 additional yards from this high core driver after I got it dialed in. So I was really happy with that. And as you might expect, the smash factor went up. So with my stock driver, I was getting an average smash factor of 1.33. And with the high core, I was getting 1.42. So I know some people are getting 1.5 smash factors with their stock drivers. And to be honest, with the high core, you might be getting more than that. You might be getting over that limit. 1.5 plus certainly seems possible. So I was actually a believer going into this test, thinking that the high core driver was going to do very well because that thinner face for slower swing speeds is going to produce more results. However, after my first two sessions, I was actually getting a little worried that this driver head might not do anything. And in fact, one of the things that I was thinking about is the way that TaylorMade makes their drivers, they add a little epoxy or some sort of resin in the speed ports here, which kind of creates a little bit of a dead zone on the face. And I thought, well, maybe shaving a TaylorMade driver isn't the best way to go because of a little resin pocket there. Maybe you just want a completely flat face, something that's a little simple more uniform all the way across you know like some of the Wilson drivers and things like that and I thought well maybe the high core works but maybe it just doesn't work on the TaylorMade but I think I have shown especially over the last few weeks here that it absolutely can work on the TaylorMades now that being said I also sent world's hottest drivers a couple of other drivers here to shave the face down for me too a much simpler more basic driver to see if we can not only test the recommended core level for my swing speed, but also a super, super high core that's recommended for people who swing 60 miles an hour. And there are people out there that do that. So I am looking forward to just stress testing, beating, and probably destroying some drivers in the process. But the high core driver, certainly does work and if you have a driver head that you really love something like this tailor made you can certainly send it to them at about 150 bucks it's probably going to take a week or two to turn it around but you can absolutely get results now your results might vary it'll probably depend heavily on your swing speed and how you weight your driver obviously that had a big impact for me but the technology certainly seems to work and it seems like a nice way and an affordable way to get a little bit more distance out of your driver so if you want to send in a driver to the world's hottest drivers i paid full retail for their service they didn't provide anything to me i definitely would say that not only was i happy with these results i was intrigued enough to go ahead and send in a couple more drivers and pay out of pocket for that service too and i'm looking forward to testing those as well so if getting a little more oomph out of your golf game is going to help you live a little better i'll put links to everything that i used in the description below peter von panda out we can discover more and explore so much deeper